All right. All right, we are now live in the group. So I just want to take a second to introduce you all to who I would consider to be the matriarch of our, but make sure that there isn't feedback on the Facebook here. Hold on. I don't want to hear it. Um, the matriarch of our network, founding coach Milan Jensen, who has been a top coach, who has been an elite coach, but also has served as um, like you were the first on the, the very first coach advisory board and really served to protect our network and advocate for the best interests of us coaches. I've learned a lot about how to be as a leader, a female leader and a leader, because um, I know she mentors a lot of us, not just, not just picks of the group, but um, today she made an incredible impact at our leadership event because she really was getting us to think about getting back to basics, which um, was why I wanted to bring her on today to talk about creating a strong, um, what I had, how I had termed it was a, a strong volume producing coach. But what we all know, because this is a business call, is that volume creates commissionable sales and that is money in your pocket and life-changing money for you and your family. And she's super popular. <laughs> so anyhow, Milan, thank you so much for being on the call. Would you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Thank you. Um, it's so fun to be on this together with you. I can't believe it's taken us this long to actually do this for the first time. Um, I know. So I am a mom with three daughters together with Kevin. So Kevin and I married late in life and he has a daughter, Nicole, and I have two girls. Um, we have seven grandchildren and two great grandsons now. So um, Liam and Ollie are the little guys. Uh, we live in the Sonoma wine country up in Northern California. And um, our background was both of us were executives in the corporate side of network marketing most, I had a stint as an ER nurse, which didn't work for me. And then when it <laughs> got invited into that space and um, just when we were ready to retire, uh, move up to the wine country, got married, and everything, Carl and his team started calling us and saying, you know, will you come help us? And I went in kicking and screaming, honestly, because I wasn't sure if I even fit in to the community at that time. Um, I was a woman who had climbed the corporate ladder, really not taking very good care of myself and focusing so much on my career and providing for my family that um, Beachbody was a little intimidating to me at first when I first started exploring it. But, you know, after spending three days with him, I'll never forget. I was, uh, I was leaving the Beachbody corporate office at the time and still um, asking myself, can I do this and will it be worth it? And can we make this really happen? This crazy dream that Carl had and he, I'll never forget, he said to me, you know, Milan, what if you could create a business doing something you really loved, where, um, you know, something you were really genuinely proud of, where the most important part of your success plan was that you took really good care of yourself. And after all those years in the corp corporate world, I realized when I was driving home from that, those three days, that the most significant moment was that moment, because no corporate executive had ever cared whether I was healthy and happy. And that was the start of what drove me um, to fall in love with coaching from, you know, the very beginning, even though it was really bumpy in the beginning. And even though, you know, it's been bumpy recently, it's just like at the heart of this, my core love and belief is that we can create a business doing something we truly love and that we're really proud of. And uh, where the most important factor always that kind of grounds us back to the middle is are we taking really good care of ourselves and are we showing the people around us that we care most about how they can too? And um, so that in a nutshell is the story, um, corporate network marketing person turned coach <laughs> and loving every minute of it. I love that. Well, I'm really excited to hear from you today because you are probably hands down one of the people I admire most in this business and, and my admiration for you has not wavered. You have shown up 
Um, and I just couldn't believe we, we sat next to each other at leadership this year. Like that, mm -hmm. there's no, there's no, uh, and, and that we've been texting back and forth recently. So there's a, uh, God is, uh, God is good. Mm -hmm. Um, when I started this call series, I started to focus on the seven skills that Eric Worre was um, encouraging us to master. If we were going to get involved in, you know, in network marketing and we were going to go professional, you know, we might, or we might as well not be amateurs at it. We might as well learn these seven skills. And so listed, it was like learning how to make your list, mm -hmm. learning how to invite learning how to present, learning, you know, good systems for following up, mm -hmm. uh, learning how to help our customers get started right or our distributors get started right, mm -hmm. um, and learning how to promote ourselves. So w those with those things, I have asked people to share if there's anything that has really stood out for you with those seven skills Cause I, I feel like you've been going to his, you've been going to Eric Worre's. Yeah. So yeah. you're familiar with his, um, seven skills. Mm -hmm. Is there any one thing instead of like going through each thing or one or two or three of those skills that you feel, um, you can speak to? You know, it's, uh, it's interesting because I'm looking at them as I'm speaking to you and just, you know, and I was pouring through some of my notes over the years of working with Eric uh, at, at times, really just one-on-one -on -one at times where he was really challenging me. And um, it, it definitely is the synergy of them all. Um, and what I found in working with coaches, there are things that they really are good at and things that they struggle with. Um, and so like they might um, get to where they built a little something, whether it's customers or coaches, and then they're so involved in supporting that, that they forgot to go back to work their list again. And so then they're kind of, okay, let's get back to, are these seven in place? Definitely is the synergy. Um, so if there's one, I think, and I'm going to, I'm going to speak to that exclusively for our group, um, that I'm going to talk about presenting your product and opportunity, the skill number three, that I think is um, so critical for us right now. And, and that certainly speaks to the whole idea of building a volume strong team. And, um, you know, when I looked at what I felt, where the gaps were in my own team and in the teams of the other uh, leaders that were out there right now, because we went through a period of massive growth. I mean, we're a company of like kind of hovering around 400 million in about year five to a billion in the last five years. So, you know, it grew and it grew because we were really focused on um, challenge graphs, gr <laughs> challenge groups and challenge packs and creating a duplicable system. And so um, I think that did fuel our growth. Recently, I think the the concern or the area, the gap that we're really focusing on is how strong are your skills at um, talking about our products beyond just challenge packs? Um, challenge packs to me are the ultimate solution. It's for the person who really is kind of in that place where they're a hot mess and they're like, I don't even know where to begin. I don't even trust myself anymore. You know, I'm not doing anything around fitness. My nutrition's a mess. I got no support. That's the challenge pack right there, but that's not everybody. Um, and so I really loved helping people focus on uh, meeting customers where they are and that our job as a coach isn't packs and points. Our job as a coach is helping people figure out what their healthy formula is. That's our, that's our unique position in help, you know, in the whole weight loss, healthy living space is healthy formula. Like, what are you doing in these three areas? It's what, it's the hard work we do as a coach. It's the truth that we tell as a coach, we're not selling one juice or one something that's going to, you know, just do this one thing and everything else is going to fall into place. No, that's not the truth. And it's not what we stand for. So learning how to present that message well, learning to posture yourself from the place that I, I help people figure out what their healthy formula is, whatever that is. And then um, speaking, you know, the one skill I've seen that's been missing in a new generation of coaches has been how to tell the beach body story. And Monica, you can remember when we started, we did that really well. We we're like, yeah, there's this company you probably saw on TV, you know, and here's what they're about, but here's what we're about. And here's where coaching came from. It came from the story of our customers. And um, so what I'd love to see, if anything, 
moving forward especially in this year is I'd love to see coaches developing the skill of telling the Beachbody story um, in a, in a really meaningful way, um, telling their own story and how it connected connects to that message of Beachbody and then getting better at talking about our products and our, and, and helping people figure out what their healthy formula is. As an example, I mean, I talk a lot about digestive issues with women and you know, the three little reset products, are three products I'm really comfortable in. Um, but there's a lot of coaches that don't know those products exist outside of ultimate reset as a whole program. So I know it's kind of a long answer to that question, but presenting products, talking about the beach body story, getting mass, become, mastering that could completely change any coach's business right now. I, I can see that. And I know that, that, that part of that healthy formula was that, the peer support model Mm -hmm. that we got and that there was a protocol to follow. I remember like it even being as funny as like, I don't know what happens. Like everybody goes through this process and then they take their after photo and like men want to show their results. So they're shaving their chest. I mean, down (laughs) to that, it being that, that like consistent with and humorous all at the same Mm -hmm. time. Yeah. The, that, the whole point was, was, I like that we are helped that you said that, that if we could get better at telling the beach body story and, and then that would help manage people's expectations for um, us, like also presenting the product as a complete solution. It's like, you don't need to, we don't need to give you, there's no more mystery behind it. Me as an individual, I'm not set apart from another coach in the yeah. network because I'm an RN or I'm a this, or I mean, God bless the people that, that have those special skills, but I'm definitely not that. And, and so um, I would want the, our, our system is set up to be able to be passed on to every single individual. Like every single person can be a coach, can successfully be a coach. It's whether they or not, they want to courageously share that story. If they can get out of their own way, of course, um, when they're posturing courageously to sell that challenge pack and not make up a bunch of stories about maybe what that individual is, is thinking about them. Mm-hmm. That's where I see the, the hurdle, the hurdles and the obstacles. It's a hurdle. If it's a hurdle, <laughs> that's a great new word. <laughs> I'm like, it's a hurdle. So yeah, the hurdles and the obstacles that people face are their own are You know, they have to just sort of be willing to face those things and not, um, and because we were talking about what will pace setters, these, this next generation of pace setters for 2018, what do we want to see from them? And we want to see a mindset shift. Like mm-hmm. one of the things that I'm seeing um, where, you know, Shakeology has always been an integral part of our product line and it hasn't changed. And, you know, and yes, and a lot of other consumables that are available to us, as well as Beachbody On Demand. And, right. you know, most of us back in the day, you know, we only had one product to sell initially. So, you know, that, that there are things that haven't changed, but our mindset has changed maybe because of for different reasons. So I think we could get back to mastering those things Ah. Uh, which leads me to then this incredible concept of um, a goal. Like people, I've always been a fan of volume. I've always been a fan of, because that's where we build strong businesses and, um, and learn to produce. Mm-hmm. Once we learn to actually share these products and get people on product, um, we're going to see the benefits of retail sales and commissions. So, could you explain your concept that you shared to us? <laughs> we can follow. Sure. I'll be over here doing diagrams. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking notes. So, you know, the idea really stemmed from um, going through a period of time where we made an important change in the company by shifting our DVDs onto a digital platform, knowing we needed to do that for the health of our future as a company and actually creating something even better to serve our customers. Um, and then also really, you know, being so uh, focused on Shakeology as our one solution and realizing that 
while that field grows, that we need to be much more innovative in how we serve people. And so I started looking back and I'm like, okay, I'm looking at my team. I'm going, where is there, where is the volume strong? Where are people's income stable? Why is that happening? So that was one place I really looked for answers. The other place I looked for answers is for years, prior even to Beachbody, I, I have uh, women that are very close friends of mine that own their own companies, direct selling companies, not distributors, but they actually own the company and I've been mentoring them. And most of them are party plan. I thought, well, you know, party plan's not been my thing, but why, why are they so volume strong? And the answer was the typical party for a party plan company is 500 points in sales. And it might take some women, one party, two parties, three parties, whatever, that's their goal. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting that that's a standard. And then it's interesting that when I look at how we started, it was all about get to Emerald and build Emeralds. Because when we did that, we had that partnering of Beachbody where we got a bunch of leads. Now, Monica, you and I both know those leads were kind of a false sense of security because those customers were too hard to reach. But what it did do is it fueled some volume initially and gave people a lot of kind of um, excitement. All right, so let's fast forward 10 years. What we know is that if I can build an Emerald that's volume strong, that that emerald is going to, um, it's going to stick. The, volume, the business is going to feel viable to them. So um, I started looking really closely at my team and where was volume strong and how is that happening? And the answer was that they were really focused. They had a really nice, broad little customer base. So when I, so I focused our entire training on 500 PB coaches. And when I say 500 PB coaches, what I mean by that is six to 10 customers. On average, uh, an order on the 50 point side up to 90 or 100 points, which is the most common, um, I wanted to empower every coach to have a lot of success building their little customer base of six to 10 people. And I also believed that as I'm sitting here, you know, I, I looked at what social media had brought to us, which was a, an amazing way to connect beyond our little social world, but also um, created the feeling or sometimes the perception that, and if I'm not highly leveraged on YouTube or crushing it on Instagram or, you know, on my phone and on my laptop all day long, making these connections and following up and everything that I, that's what it takes to be successful. And I just don't believe it. I just have never believed that. I think they're great tools. And I think you can totally expand your world through social media, but it's not, uh, I needed to believe that the lady across the street who has a little circle of yoga friends could be successful in this business that I could show her how with six to 10 customers. And that from that customer base, she could duplicate that. And so the four principles of the idea is number one, the healthy formula. So that every coach understands that our real job is not pack some points. Our real job is helping everyone figure out what their healthy formula is. And when you start to see it that way, then you realize that somebody who is going to a CrossFit gym or somebody who tells you they will never drink a shake, that the, that the relationship isn't over there because you can't sell them a challenge pack. But that in fact, if you're looking at yourself as helping that CrossFit guy figure out what his healthy formula is, you can say, look, you got the fitness thing figured out. Let's, let's kind of stay in touch with how, if that's working, continuing to work for you, but what are you doing to fuel those workouts and how are you staying accountable? Um, or if the person who says I'll never drink a shake, cause you know, like I live up in wine country where people are funny about nutrition and you know, everybody's like super into whole food, whatever. <laughs> We're all granola girls. Mm. So to her, I might say either give me seven days to break that mindset. Will you give me seven days or um, which is great with clean wheat. Or I'll say, you know, let's just work on your digestion first. Let's just start there. So the healthy formula is something that opens up the, mi um, the mindset of a coach to think my job is really to help everybody figure out what theirs is without feeling like I've got to convince them or shift them off of what they're doing. My goal is just to help them figure that out. So it starts with that and it's four steps. The second is the 500 PV coach. So what I'd love for every coach to do is get there, get confident there, um, and then empower the coaches around them to have that same success. So however you can do that. And for every team that's, that's um, adopted this into their thinking, um, what their, their main question is, how can I help a coach thrive with six to 10 customers? Now your six to 10 customers aren't going to stick with you forever. Some will finish their program or some will, you know, uh, move away or do whatever. So you're always ongoingly in that practice of that. And that's why you end up with usually much more than 500 points, but that's the idea. How do you empower everybody? Cause the whole thing rests there. The next thing is get to Emerald and build Emerald. That's what an Emerald tribe is. So an Emerald tribe is somebody who says my role as a coach is 
I'm going to do one thing really well. I'm going to empower my team uh, of coaches to be so successful with their six to 10 customers. And then as my team grows, my main job is to teach my personally sponsored coaches how to be teachers. And if my personally sponsored coaches are competent to teach their first level coaches how to build emeralds, you've built four levels deep. It never stops at four levels because everybody's practicing that same thing. But just as an initial model to show one person how to teach their personally sponsored two people how to teach their people to build emeralds, you've got four levels, you've got 15 coaches. Here's what happens. The 500 PP coach is going to make about $125 a month just by doing that job. They're six to 10 customers, which will most likely technically make them profitable in the business. And that's an important thing, whether it's for their own personal use or whatever their that little 500 PB coach has six to 10 customers and they can say, I make a little bit of money as a coach. Great. The Emerald coach who's built an Emerald tribe, probably making about $474 a month. That's not life changing, but for a lot of Emeralds with their little tribe, they're going to feel that they can do this and that it's worth it. Um, and that's more than most Emeralds are doing today. And there's a reason for that. A lot of emeralds come in with a challenge pack, run a challenge group, and, and then they're kind of like, I'm not sure what to do next. And they hang out on their 90 PV and don't go build the custom focus on their customer base. So healthy formula, 500 PV coach, get to emerald and build emeralds and build emerald tribes, completely change the volume structure of every diamond who's doing that. And so when we started um, encouraging people to rank into the diamond position, we said, look, you're probably going to get to diamond, you know, based on your little 12 people, four on either side and two of them are emeralds. That's 12. Great. You're there. Um, you know, you can be a classic diamond where everybody's hanging out on their 90 PV Shakeology or daily sunshine order. That's okay too. But that's really not what we consider diamond strong. Diamond strong is when you've got four emerald tribes on either side. And let me show you that if you do that, and who cares if it takes you a year, your income is about $3,600 with four on either side. And if I can get a diamond to building emeralds that are strong in little tribes, if that one emerald says, you know, I had a customer order cancel or something, the whole thing doesn't fall apart. Because <laughs> what happens now if the diamond's just hanging out on their 90 PV and one of their coaches um, has a negative order or doesn't have their 50 points to stay active, they're kind of like shrugging their shoulders and going, oh, well, but if a diamond is strong with Emerald tribes, that virtually never happens. And it's really because in that entire organization, it's all, um, uh, it's all founded on people serving six to 10 customers and feeling good about that. And so when I looked at this, I said the everybody in every step of this um, of this building process has to say every day, I can do this and it's worth it to me. Um, it's worth it, not just for the money, it's worth it because I love serving my customers. It's worth it because my business is profitable. It's worth it because this little bit of money I'm making is something that's changing you know, what we do in our family. And if I can get a diamond earning 3000 to 5,000 plus, um, even if it takes a year or more, then I, I know that they're gonna feel rewarded for that effort. And um, that's the main goal of this whole um, volume strong concept is to show, I basically want people to see a model that they're, and they're saying themselves, like, see it, I can do that. I can teach that. I can duplicate that. Um, and I like how that feels. I like knowing that if I put the effort in long range, I'm going to build an income that I can rely on. Um, and we actually, with our tribe, look at six on either side, just so you know. So because I like having, having a team of 12. It's an important number to me. And um, if you've got six on either side, you're at about, I think, $5,600 or so a month as a diamond. So yes, it's, uh, you know, when I say it's about income, I want the income to be consistent. It's also about feeling like what you're building is strong. And it's about knowing all the way down from the diamond to the emerald tribe, to the emerald, to the coach doing 500 points, Everybody in that whole line of relationships is experiencing something that's really positive. Did I, did I, did I kind of go over it all at once? I didn't that's go into like, big detail, but that's no, kind of how, how it pulls together. I don't, I honestly, I think that um, my, as I presented this business and, you know, when you talk about posturing and mm -hmm. I've had people say, okay, so I want to make $50,000, you know, and they, they have these big goals and, and I, 
I try to tell them like, look, I make that. You don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. I assure you that of all the people who, who you could, you know, who you could put your trust in when it's time to get you to that point, I can get you to that point. But right. understanding the concept of being, becoming an Emerald yourself or, or becoming a 500 PV coach, that this mm-hmm. is a nice system, like a systematic process that you then, by the time you get to six and six, emerald tribes on each side you're you're it's so strong in your head and it's definitely something that um I know I pushed for when I was on the coach advisory board really focusing on producers and um because I know that like you said that when a coat when a not all six to ten customers are going to stay with you so uh, your world doesn't fall apart when somebody cancels because you have the skills and the belief right. to get that next customer and help that go through that whole process with that new customer. Um, this is so funny. So looking at, I like this. And of course I want, I'm like, what does the person, who does the person have to become in their mindset to be able to, um, get themselves on this path? Like what are some of the few things that you would recommend they do? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you're the first person to ask me that. And I love that question Um, because so here's, what's really important to me. I think it's, it's easy. Sometimes I work with women, you know, over 50, 55 who are coming out of their career who may not have the retirement plan they imagined, or at least have a quality of life they want to sustain. Um, These are things I never knew 10 years ago, Monica, when we first started, that this would be where I was now, right? And so it's so interesting that even like two years ago, I mean, two days ago, I was sitting with my sister who's older than I am and pretty much set for her life and her retirement. I thought, I don't know if I am or not. So, you know, give me, give me the, give me the lowdown. She goes, Beachbody is the most amazing annuity you could have ever created for yourself in the last 10 years. Like, well, you know, because Kevin and I got newly married and we're like, what can we do in 10 years? We never imagined when we said yes, because what we said yes to was Carl's vision and our desire to be a part of it. Like 10 years Mm -hmm. now, my sister's like, you could have never built this any other way, you know, that this Mm -hmm. and, and here's what you would have had to do to try to create this. And even the idea that, you know, investing in building diamonds. So if you're just now getting started out as a diamond and, or, or even as an emerald and you, and you see this and you're like, I think I can do this. Here's the thing I never realized. Um, we, you know, building this allows you to get the best medical insurance you could possibly get if you wanted it for you and your family. It allows you to put your children on your payroll. And I'm only going down this, this path for one second, then I, I'm going to answer your question a little differently. It allows um, us to basically create leaders that pay us a 10% because we forget about that matching team bonus for the rest of our lives. So even if we did retire, which we have no intention of doing now, but even if we did, it would always be there. And so sometimes you just don't see um, what you're building and what it can bring you long term. But it is, it is stunning to me to have my sister who has been very successful in her life, look at me and say, you created something pretty amazing. And I don't think you've been realized you did it. So what you have to become to do that is important to me, because I think sometimes we look at social media, and we're like, I got to be like superstar social media girl, or I got to be on Instagram all day long, or I've got to be like, what's the trade off? What do I have to do to get there? And, you know, my answer to that is focus on creating a nice solid little customer base focus on creating your little tribe of people you're really helping of six to ten or more and being really good at that master that first master the healthy formula feel like so solid and how you can talk about that so how's your health i mean i don't run around saying do you want to be in a challenge group do you want to be in a challenge group i got a free challenge group you know challenge group i have one and i connect people to that but you know where people really thrive is in my vip customer group which isn't a challenge group. It's an ongoing hangout with me. Let's figure out what healthy living is. And so my questions when I'm out talking to people is how's your health, man? How have you been? Catch me up. Or if it's a total stranger, it's like, if you could change one thing that would make the most difference that I could help you with, what would it be this year? And it might not be health, 
it might be something else. doesn't matter to me. It's a really awesome way for me to connect with people and say, how can I serve you? And so my world, I take this business out with me and live the life I want to live. I don't sit in front of my computer. In fact, I took Facebook and Instagram off of my cell phone this month. And a lot of people are like, what? You're in network marketing. How could you do that? You know what I do? I still take the pictures. I still interact with social media, but I do it in the hour or two that I have scheduled on my laptop. And so when I'm with my family and everybody else, I'm not scrolling or if I get bored at the movies <laughs> and I'm just sharing this because I want people to know that social media is an amazing tool for us, but it's a part of how we do this. Being a Beachbody coach is an amazing vehicle, but it's a part of who we are. And so what I love is that we get to integrate um, what we do with our everyday life. And the first mastery is healthy formula customer feel happy doing this work um, bring the joy into the work that you're doing and trust that when you when you're doing that and you gain confidence so that you can teach it to others and you start building your tribe that way um, everybody will be following that same lead it will be woven into the culture of what you build and what and I, and I promise you it'll be incredibly strong so that's what I want to tell you is that who you get to be is who you already are. <laughs> and, and I hope you take this business into your life in a way that brings you great joy and um, that you don't wake up every day saying, I'm not doing enough. I could be doing more. Um, one of the reasons I took Facebook and Instagram off is I was scrolling through and watching what other people were doing. And it just kept me thinking, Oh, I should do that too. Oh, that's really good. Oh, that's, and I kept looking for tips instead of just doing my own deal and doing what was natural to me and enjoying that. Um, so you're the first person I've answered that question to that way, but I can't tell you how much more joy I've had in the business since I did that in January than I mm -hmm. ever have in the last two years. Um, and I'm making better connections than I ever have. And my family's happier with me than they've ever been. Um, yeah. So we had, I mean, we, when we started this business, we didn't have social media. You know, you know, we had the message boards as a means to connect, but I wasn't on the message boards 24 seven. I was right. on the message boards, you know, committing to my healthy formula and then coaching other people through their process as they committed. Mm -hmm. And, and, and social media was, I mean, absolutely was able to blah, just allow us to connect with more people while we're sleeping, but it also did create a lot of distractions as incrementally it became more and more. And, and then I'd be in line and where I normally would get into conversations with people, that mm -hmm. stuff lessened. Yeah. Uh, and, I'd love, and I'd love to see a couple of conversations happening. I would love to see coaches sharing with each other. Here's what, here's a relationship I created with a customer and, and why that's so important to me, or here's a relationship between me and another coach and why that's enriched my lives. Let's talk about, cause that's the sweet spot of coaching, the selling and that that's all a skill, but it's that middle part between you and a customer or you and another coach, that's the opportunity. And um, so I hope we talk more about that. And I hope as a team, when you see this to really start to inspire people, what's going to happen is somebody's going to say, my mom, we were at dinner the other day. My mom took like some Tums out of her purse. And I said, listen, I see so many people with Tums, but would you be open to just trying an enzyme, a natural enzyme that you could take right before every meal that's going to totally change how your stomach digests that food? We have that product, but most people don't think of Optimize as an enzyme which replaces Tums and all that other junk people take because they can't digest their shrimp or whatever it is they're eating. Or I've got somebody, I've got a niece with chronic tummy trouble. I'm like, try Soothe, it's turmeric and aloe. You know, turmeric Isn't that incredible? It's incredible. So, you know, I just, I would love to see coaches share with each other, even in little two minute videos in your group, you know, here's, uh, you know, I got, my friend's teenage kid off of monster drinks and, you know, or I realized that boosts aren't just for Shakeology. Did you know you could boost your juice? I got <laughs> juicers. If you got a juicing community, have them try boosts in their juice. It's awesome. <laughs> Whether it's the, you know, any one of them. So I just would love to see us get super creative and make it fun 
to share with each other. Here's the customer's need and here's how we can follow it, serve it with what we have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. I'm, I mean, you're preaching. I love it. <laughs> I've definitely been a fan of building volume and I've understood what it takes to max out the comp plan and numbers are my thing. And, and like, even when your sister was talking about a uh, beach body working for you in retirement and understanding like the impact of how much money you have to be like say invested in real estate to get the return. I mean, paid off, you know, in cash to get yeah. that return on your rental properties or whatever. And then all of the headache and overhead that comes with that. We don't have any of that. Right. The headache and I mean, I have some of the heartache, I suppose, of seeing people come and go, people I get attached to. Mm-hmm. And, and knowing that they, um, they, that be, I, I believe that Beachbody was for them and truly was their healthy formula, but for whatever reason, they lost their focus yeah. or, or their joy. And so, yeah, I mean, definitely that's why I like to think about like, what is the mindset of the, of this joyful coach that is, committed to this, to helping find healthy formulas for their customers, building this customer base, and then teaching other coaches that to, to create that same level of leadership. That's, Mm -hmm. that's so not overwhelming and is so fulfilling. It's what you have been able to articulate for us um, coming from my teaching background (laughs) is so it, it provides me with so much clarity, you know, it's so, it's so put together. And I know we'll be using your words over and over to create this community with the right focus and the right mindset and that people are not points or challenge packs or that they are people. And I, I I can, I mean, the one luxury I have is I really can go back to my, my first experience as a customer, you know, being a mom, with a three-month-old and, you know, frazzled with a two-year-old and a three-month-old going, finding this thing on television at night with Tracy Morrow frolicking in the sands of Hawaii, (laughs) you know, on the infomercial thinking to myself, like, well, why is she so happy? (laughs) Then I, and then I snuck downstairs and bought the program and laughed at myself for like, that's the way I have to deal with it. I, the deal with the fears that come up with being vulnerable, saying, I'm going to take on this challenge, you know, and being so afraid of failure, right? Just mm-hmm. taking on the healthy formula for myself. But I remember being what needed to happen in order for me to be successful and then just helping other people buy into that, you, you know, surrender, surrender. It's okay. <laughs> you have so much waiting for you on the other side, you know, look at me like a crystal ball and that, and Milan and that we both have been here and had all this skepticism. And then we, we just bought in and believed and have seen this whole incredible change and life changing um, opportunities. So yeah. And I, re- I remember when we were in the UK, they have this thing called mind the gap, which means don't fall in the hole oh, yeah. between you. And I was coming home from that trip. And I thought to myself, you know, there's this, there's a lot of gaps in life, but this gap, if, if, if social media is supposed to bring us together, why do so many people feel more alone than they ever have? And if there's so many solutions to living a healthy lifestyle, why are we not winning that battle either? And I feel like as coaches, our real work is in that gap. Our real work is in helping people figure out what healthy is for them without judgment, but with complete encouragement. What does your healthy look like? Um, Because you're entitled to it, you deserve it. And um, in the space of feeling alone, no matter how busy we are and how connected we are and how many responsibilities and roles we have, how can I help you not feel as alone in this? That's the real work of a coach and it brings me great joy every day. Wow. It's amazing what you can create in 39 minutes. (laughs) I am so grateful. Do you have any final parting words or 
I guess my final parting words is that I love you. And I know that your team is an extension of who you are as a woman. And um, I can't see them, which is a little tough, but I know they're listening to, to both of us. And I just want to encourage you guys to lock arms this year and um, bring more joy into what you're doing. Um, lean on each other and um, focus on empowering each other to really thrive in those relationships that you create with each other and with your customers and the rest will happen. Um, I believe that this year as a company, we are emerging into what we were always intended to be. And we had to go through some growth and some struggle and some um, really beautiful refinement to be where we are now. I'm excited more than I've ever been for summit to bring that to light. And um, so, yeah, I guess I'm just honored to be in this with you guys. Thank you. I'm giving you a big like hug from afar. <laughs> and I hope I see your face soon. Like yes. that was so wonderful to be sitting right next to you mm. at leadership. All the reason for me to get back there again and work hard so so I can earn that spot again. But thank you so much for your time. I'm, I know we were like trying to get through the holidays to get you. And this is such a great way to start January. So yes, thank you so much. My pleasure. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye.